Hi, are you interested in learning more about the theory of multiple intelligences? This is a theory developed by Howard Gardner, and I'm going to give you an overview of how it came about, and I'm also going to go into detail of each specific traits and characteristics of all of the nine types. So stick around. I'm Janice, you're watching Sharp Cookie. On this channel, we talk about learning and problem solving. I post new videos every week, so please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. Okay, so first, let's talk about how this theory came about, when it came about, and how it was popularized. Now, during the 1970s, when Gardner was doing his research, it was widely believed that you could come up with a person's intelligence, and they determined that as the IQ score. And people generally believed and accepted that you were born with a certain level of intelligence, and that's what you had your whole life. And this was the IQ score. And Gardner just didn't believe this. He didn't buy into it. Um, based on his research, he found that one, intelligence was not static. It wasn't like something you were born with and that's what you had the rest of your life. And two, he also believed that these IQ tests were mainly only testing certain types of intelligence, which is fine, but you also have to recognize that people have other types besides just logical reasoning types and sometimes spatial reasoning on these tests. There's many other types of intelligence that other human beings have. And it's a great theory, and I really personally resonate with it because I don't believe that some people are just intelligent in everything and others aren't. We all have specific strengths and specific weaknesses. I especially love this metaphor of fish being really bad at climbing trees. <laughs> so that's the truth of humans. We're, we're good at some things and not good at others, and that's particularly why I'm interested in this theory. Now, this theory gained huge popularity in the 80s. In 1983, he published his book, Frames of Mind, which you can obviously find online and read if you find this stuff super interesting. Um, and that really took this theory to a whole new level. Now, Gardner believes that you can decide, hey, I want to increase my musical intelligence, and you can work on that. And I believe that as well. As a tutor, I see this all the time. Kids really can improve and do better on areas that they choose to. If you do 50 math problems a day, that part of your intelligence, that logical and reasoning part, will improve. So I definitely agree with what I'm seeing with Gardner's theory. So a common question people ask is, is there a test? Can I just take a test and know which intelligence I am and how high I am in certain ones and lower in others? And the answer is, there are tests out there, but Gardner himself has not come out with a test. So anything that you find online is not endorsed nor created by Howard Gardner. first type of intelligence that I want to talk about, which is the naturalist intelligence. So this type of intelligence is our attunement with the environment. So clouds, rock formations, other animals and species, insects, fish, mammals, our understanding and skill level with all of that. So usually it relates to the sciences. And people who have high intelligence in this area might be zoologists, geologists, biologists. Other types of people could be the ones that want to get even more involved in the environment and plants. So for example, gardeners, farmers, landscapers. These are all types of people who have high naturalist intelligence. And as far as hobbies go, they often enjoy the outdoors. So that makes a lot of sense. They like hiking, camping, fishing, hunting, all of these activities that take them outside. So the next type of intelligence is called musical intelligence. And on this type of intelligence, people have a very high ability to discern tone, pitch, rhythm, all the things having to do with music. 
So as kids, they might be the type that are always humming or drumming or tapping their feet to a rhythm. And this, they often can also hear sounds that other people can't hear. So their discernment between different sounds is very, very good. So obviously careers related to this would be professional musicians, composers, conductors, anybody related to the music field. The next type is called logical mathematical intelligence. And this is the type that is typically tested on many IQ tests. So people assume that if you have a high score on an IQ test, you're intelligent and people who don't are not. But according to Gardner's theory, you might be very high in this particular area, which is great, but you could be lower in something like naturalist intelligence or musical intelligence, which we all know is not tested in schools, it's not on standardized tests, and you don't see it on IQ tests. So mathematical, logical intelligence is very close to what it sounds. You're good at numbers, you're very good at problem solving, coming up with hypotheses. Your mind is very logical and step by step. So careers with this, obviously, mathematicians, accountants, scientists, people who have a very logical mind, like one plus two is three. These are the type of people that will score very high typically on IQ tests and also on many standardized tests. They're also the type that probably found a lot of subjects in school very easy because our school system is geared towards this type of intelligence. The next type is called existential intelligence. And this one I was really excited to read about because I personally connect with it. This is the type of intelligence where people connect to the bigger life questions, those existential questions like, why do we exist? Why are we here? Why does this planet exist? And it also relates to spirituality, and you can understand why that, why that is there, that connection between the existential questions and spirituality. So a lot of spiritualists, theologians, philosophers have very high existential intelligence. The next type is interpersonal intelligence. And this is the skill with communicating with others, both verbally and non-verbally. So people that score very high in this area are usually counselors, psychologists, people who really get in tune with how someone else is thinking or feeling. They can really easily pick up on subtle cues, maybe even in body language or in tone of voice that other people can't pick up on. People with this type of intelligence also make really good politicians, salespeople, and actors. The next type is bodily kinesthetic intelligence. And as it sounds, this is the ability to move physical objects and your own body. So some people who have a high level of skill in this area are obviously athletes, professional dancers. They understand proprioception, where their body is in space. They have the ability to manipulate their body very easily and also manipulate other objects. So some of these people just like to use their hands. So they're craftspeople, maybe they're contractors, um, they're the guy down the street who likes to build surfboards in his garage. These are the type that have high bodily kinesthetic intelligence. The next type is linguistic verbal intelligence. And along with the logical intelligence and mathematical that I talked about, this is the other main intelligence that our school system really values and tests and appreciates. And this is the type of intelligence that has to do with language. So the written language and how it's spoken, grammar, writing skills. So people who are very high in this intelligence are very good readers, they have an excellent vocabulary, and they're often really great writers. So professional writers, professional journalists, novelists, all of these professions, the people within those professions tend to have a high level of skill in verbal intelligence. Now, I already mentioned interpersonal intelligence, which is our attunement with others, but there's another type, and this type is called intrapersonal intelligence, and this is our attunement 
with ourselves. So some people are very highly intelligent with their own emotional states, thoughts, reactions to things. So these are people who perhaps like to meditate, watch their thoughts. They enjoy journaling every day, being really in tune with what is my emotional state at this moment? How am I feeling? They can often watch their thoughts come in as they react to certain situations. So of course, like all the types, if you want to improve in this type, you can. You can build skills. I noticed in myself, I've been meditating for many years. And as time goes on, I become very, very aware of when a certain event happens, what corresponding thought is triggered. And I can decide how I want to react or not react or what emotional state comes up based on a particular thought. Now, people who score highly on this type of intelligence, and when I say score, I don't mean like there's a test. I mean they they just have a high level in this type of intelligence, are spiritual teachers and leaders, people who really understand. So someone like Eckhart Tolle would be scoring very, very high on this. And if you've read any of his books, you know what I'm talking about. So this is exactly what intrapersonal intelligence is all about. And this leads us right into the ninth type, which is visual spatial intelligence. And I found that there are some IQ tests that test this type of intelligence very strongly. So if you take one of those and you're high in this area, you're going to do really, really well. And that is your ability to manipulate objects and things in your mind. So for example, if I ask you, what would a left hand glove look like if I turned it inside out? Someone with high visual spatial intelligence would find this task very easily because they could very easily imagine a glove being turned inside out and what that would look like. And people who would score low are going to look at you like, have no clue what that is. (laughs) They're also really good at those abstract reasoning puzzles or they'll show a picture of an object and ask you, what would it look like if you rotated that object 90 degrees? So as you can imagine, architects score very highly in this area. So do engineers, artists, sculptors, people with the ability to see and manipulate things in space. They also tend to be very visual. So if you've seen my video on the visual learning style, this really, really connects with visual spatial intelligence. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you appreciated it and it's like a little thank you to me and I know to make more content like this. Also, I have an online Facebook community. It's really fun. We already have over 100 members and I usually post some sort of puzzle or article related to problem solving and learning. So if you like problem solving, if you like puzzles, you're really going to like the group. It's called Sharp Cookie Community. You can find it on Facebook and I have it linked up below in the description. I also offer online virtual tutoring. So if you're interested in any of that, I do math, reading, I tutor the SAT and ACT. I also have college students that I tutor on their courses and writing papers. You can email me at hellosharpcookie at gmail.com. If you enjoyed this, make sure you watch the videos on different types of learning styles. I think you would like love those videos. Also, subscribe. I post new videos every week on learning and problem solving. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Janice. This is Sharp Cookie. Bye.